The place to eat in Eufaula is the Cajun Corner. The Cajun Corner, located at 114 North Eufaula Avenue, is a place where you can let the good times roll and enjoy the taste of Louisiana. Try our signature New Orleans stuffed fish with your choice of red snapper, grouper, or tilapia. Taste the Creole flavor of our Mardi Gras stuffed shrimp or North Shore pasta. At the Cajun Corner, 114 North Eufaula Avenue, we've got it all. From cocktails, appetizers, amazing salads, steaks, seafood, and pasta to tempting desserts you just can't resist. Y'all come have a ball at the Cajun Corner and let us serve you like the kings and queens of Mardi Gras. Okay, we'll call this meeting to order. We'll have invocation by the Reverend Richard Hunter from the First African Baptist Church. And please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we come in the precious name of our Son, Jesus, thanking you for your wonderful <clears throat> blessing. We pray, Lord, your blessing upon this city council men and women as they deliberate over the people's business. Bless our mayor as he lead this city in this more difficult time. Bless our chief, our police department, and all other officials of our city. Then, oh God, our Father, we ask you to remember our nation. Bless our president to lead us in this most difficult time. Bless America and keep us safe. Father, all this we ask in the precious name of our Son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Roll call, please. Present. 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 Mr. Present. Okay, we have no honors and recognition tonight. So the first thing, we have the approval of the agenda. We need a motion and a second to approve the order of the City Council agenda dated July 3rd, 2017. Make a motion, please. Right. Approve the order. Second. All right, we got a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Okay, all in favor, let it be known by the word I. Opposers, nay. Eyes have it. Okay, next we have the consent agenda. All the agendas have been sent out to council members for their review and their reading. And uh, we have two items on the uh, consent agenda. We need a motion and a second to approve the consent of the agenda, and it includes the minutes of June 19, 2017, and we need the claim docket dated July 28, 2017, June. I mean June, uh, in the amount of $32,692.54. Mr. Richards. Second. All right, it's been properly moved in second. Uh, are there any questions? <coughs> All in favor, let it be known by the word aye. Aye. All opposed is nay. Motion carried. Okay, next. We hear from the mayor. Thank you, Josh. Uh, not a lot tonight. We do have our, our annual uh, fireworks, 4th of July celebration tomorrow at Lake Point. Uh, that will be a that will be a pretty big deal. We, we we've been growing every year, and I think last year we had between three and four thousand people. So so uh, looking forward to it. Uh, this year the National Guard has gotten involved uh, really big in this thing, and they're bringing in a Black Hawk helicopter. I'm excited to see that, and uh, and uh, I think a couple of rock climbing walls, but we got four bands playing. So we've been planning this all year. Probably keep what six, six, seven meetings through the course of the year. So, uh, so it ought to be a big, big deal. And, and I want to thank uh, you, Follow TV. They're going to live stream it so people at home that maybe can't get out can, can actually see the fireworks tomorrow night. So, thank you all for that. Uh, also, we now have at the chamber the Smithsonian Water Waterways exhibit uh, through our main street and. Uh, they're going to be here to the first week of August, and everyone needs to certainly get out and see that. That's 
pretty interesting. Uh, you going to introduce? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, can you tell us about the softball tournament we got coming? The softball, or baseball. It's softball. Softball. Open ceremonies are Friday night, beginning at six o'clock at the Chamber of Commerce. I'm really excited about that, bringing everybody downtown and showing off that part of the community. Um, the uh, sweet teas, it's five and six year old girls. So that's gonna that's gonna be a lot of fun. A lot of people. And there's the angels, there's uh, nine and ten year old girls, there's nineteen in each of those divisions. And uh, two teams of pony pets to make for the girls. So we're looking for a big turnout. Uh, start playing Saturday morning and have a three or four hour break. businesses down there. They're, they're excited. Our host families have been in contact with each, each of the teams and welcome them here and tell them what's going on and what's happening. And, you know, they're, they're, they're excited to come to the new park. Some of them already been here. They haven't had a local area, but there's a lot of them that have not been in the park, so they're looking forward to it. You know, there's always going to be something we forget. We hope it's something small this year instead of 2014. I, I did a big boo-boo there, but it's over. <laughs> I got stickies notes everywhere. All you, all you that. learn from it, we're okay. Ooh, that's right. <laughs> but anyway, love to have y'all out and join us. It's, it's going to be really cool out of Creek Town. You know, the wind blows. <laughs> no gnats or anything. <laughs> but that's the same thing as the fireworks. This <laughs> right. Also, uh, uh, Shawala Drive, the Shawala Drive project will start next Monday. And I just need to notify. The public of that. That's how they'll do it on Facebook and so, several other areas, but that, that'll uh, uh, try to are trying to finish that before school starts. So, so uh, that's a route to the schools right there. So, also, uh, I think our sidewalk project, downtown sidewalk project, will be complete here probably by the end of next week, Tim. Yes. Uh, the only thing left is the rails up there on 431 on the on the uh, east side of 431. So. Looking forward to getting that done. So that's all I have. Thank you, Thank you Matt. <coughs> okay, next ordinances and resolution. Any visitors? We don't have any visitors. Okay. Um, next, we have our ordinances and resolutions. We have the second reading of the uh, Sunday alcohol sales first. Okay. Um, ordinance number 2017-7, an ordinance to amend the Code of Ordinances of the City of Eufaula, Alabama, Chapter 10, relating to alcohol beverages to authorize Sunday alcohol sales in the City of Eufaula. Okay. Thank you. Uh, at this time, I will open the floor for uh, <coughs> public hearing. This will be our second public hearing. Now, uh, I just want you to know this now. First of all, like I told you last council meeting, please respect each other. Please respect each other. This is not your town, it's our town. Another thing, when one is talking, do not disturb. We will ask you to please, if when you get ready to speak, please come to the podium, face the council, and get state your name, state your address for records. Now, at the same time, this is not an open shit case. I don't expect anyone in here to ask a question and someone over here answer it because you're not talking to them. You're talking to the council. 
you are addressing the counsel and the attorney only. Now, any outburst, any disrespect, you know, I love all of you, and I gotta tell you the truth. But if you disrespect the counsel, we will ask you to please leave. Don't want to do this, so respect each other. Now, so what we'll do starting off, we're going to give you two minutes. When you get through with your two minutes, uh, Alisa will tell you when your two minutes is up. Then raise your hand so I can give you permission to come up next and speak. Now, please, let's respect each other, okay? Any question to me before we start? Remember, you are not talking to the audience. You're talking to the council. Okay. Those that want to speak at the public hearing, please raise your hand so records can be taken. All right, let's start with you first. State your name, state your address, and come to the podium. I'm Bobby Gunner, and I live at 520 Cherry Street. I guess you know what town. But uh, I'm against the Sunday alcohol sale. I feel like we don't need it. And then two, Long time ago, our forefathers put uh, in there to respect the Lord on Sunday. And that's why we have a no alcohol sales on Sunday. It's to respect the Lord. And we're not respecting Him anymore. And we can see this in society all, uh, all together. People don't respect our flag no more. People don't respect each other anymore. And here we are saying, well, you know, we can go ahead and have alcohol sales on Sunday. It won't hurt nobody. You know, we got to wine and dine these folks and all. Well, hey, you ain't got to wine and dine. You can serve them uh, a sweet tea. That's a southern favorite. And if they don't like that, they can drink water. But alcohol, we don't, we don't need it on Sunday. And mainly, it's just out of respect for God. Not out of trying to hurt somebody's business. And besides, you know, Georgetown there ain't that much competition anyway. Who wants to drive all the way two miles to get drunk? They do that later. But I, I just encourage you to put God first and not, not money or taxes. We can live without the taxes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Donner. Mm -hmm. Next is uh, hold a man. Please hold a man. I think I saw this gentleman second. Yeah. Yes. And I forgot to tell y'all while you're coming, sir. Let me say this. If you are speaking with a group, pick your spokesperson and let them give the ideas and the pointers that you want to present to us. Okay? Thank you, sir. Okay. Please excuse me. No problem. Thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Craig Packard, uh, 204 Cypress Cove Drive. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk today. Um, I'm the uh, general manager at Humminbird. A number of you know me. And um, I'd like to just reinforce a lot of the points that Sally Garrison made in her letter to the editor a while back and just lend a little perspective from the business point of view. Because I think that you know business is you know one of the most critical building blocks to make this community sustainable, and uh, successful and to grow. So from our point of view, um, since we got acquired by Johnson Outdoors a number of year ago, years ago, we've hired like 80 professional and technical positions in addition to our direct hourly jobs. So that's very good growth. It's good people bringing good people in the community, bringing good wages and brings a lot of good opportunities. It's been very difficult to recruit. You know, anyone knows that in any town with, you know, trying to get talent, trying to bring people in. And this single uh, resolution or ordinance, this is not magic. 
this is just one of the building blocks that we need in the um, economic development plan. We've identified a number of building blocks that just add together to keep getting us together to our goal of being a sustainable community. So um, I think that's just one of the important ones because I know when I go to our management team and I say, we've got to recruit for some engineers, we've got to recruit for some managers, if I'm not capable of doing that and we, and we actually give up and we've given up uh, a, a couple times over the years because we just couldn't find someone to move into the community, I got to move those jobs elsewhere to Georgia or Minnesota and we don't want to do that. We want to have every little thing, every benefit we possibly can have to be you know, a, a normal progressive um, town with some uh, <coughs> things to do on a Sunday and be able to bring people and their family in to enjoy that. So thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Next, please. Bobby and I are a group. We'll be married 54 years thanks to Jesus soon. But now we prayed about what to do or not. We didn't know who was going to share. I didn't know who was going to share. I'm Carol. <laughs> I'm Carol Gunner, 520 Cherry Street. Okay, I had about four and a half minutes. I didn't time it, but I, I can only have two. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll just go on to the last part I had, and that was when I was a youngster, I heard about uh, something that happened in another town, and... Um, uh, a bad wreck. It was a real bad wreck. And when the fathers and the parents were called to come, most of the kids in the car uh, were underage. And uh, this happened. And uh, it was obvious that they'd been drinking. And uh, most of them were killed, if not all of them. Uh, they were underage, and one of the fathers especially just hung with it. He said, I want to know of any police. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I am going to find out if there's anybody that's, you know, helping these restaurants to sell or whatever. And uh, I'm going to uh, find out, uh, you know, the store that sells to underage. I, anybody connected with this? And he was just irate. He was so upset. And uh, who would do this, you know? And when he got home, he saw his liquor cabinet open and a note. And it said, Dad, I hope you don't mind, but... We want to party tonight. That's is. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Main Street Family Urgent Care. Relief has a new address in Eupaula. Main Street Family Urgent Care is now open on South Eupaula Avenue, just across from Winn Dixie. From cuts to broken bones, strep throat, and flu, they can help you heal and feel better fast. Open seven days a week. Main Street Family Urgent Care provides high quality medical care for the entire family. Right here, right now. Keeping you close to home and getting you back to healthy fast. Main Street Family Urgent Care. Heal better. Feel better fast. Okay. 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 Next. Okay. You young lady. Hi, I'm Sarah Mee Garrison. I live at 305 St. Francis Road. So I'm a senior at the University of Alabama. And I think that Sunday sales is a progressive move that I support because it is attractive to young people and that is Eufaula's future. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Garrison. Okay, ma'am. My name is Louise Howard, 501 Five Mile Road. And I would like to point out, in the past when we had the consideration of the entertainment district, there was a lot of concern expressed about public drunkenness. And I would ask, have any of you seen it? I say no. Because we have responsible adults in this community. The problem we have is there are places where young people are going, they're taking their own alcohol, they're not consuming it downtown. 
Um, there are uh, cans of alcoholic beverages I find on the median at the gazebo when I come in and go to work in the morning. Cans are not sold in the restaurants, only bottles. So they're bringing their own. So I take, I feel that that's their, res their responsibility to drink responsibly. It's not ours to judge them or, or to control them. This is a very progressive move for the city to consider to help the businesses downtown. The number of people that we have that come through this community going to and from the coast, I think is a great place. I've seen anglers walk out of a restaurant because they cannot obtain a beer to have with their dinner after they come off the water. We have a tremendous amount of appeal for anglers that come to this community. The ball games, you're going to have adults, you're going to want to have a drink after they've been outside. And I'm not saying they're going to drink till they're drunk, they're going to have one drink to, to quench their thirst. I think that this is a progressive thing and I don't feel that it would be disrespectful as it speak afternoon, after 12 o'clock noon sales, and I think this would be a very positive move for our community. Thank you for your time. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Garrison. Thank you. I'm Ed Garrison, 1936 Country Club Road. And uh, I agree with the, with the points the previous speaker made. And I also think that it's important for our community to pass this ordinance. Uh, and in a progressive nature, we're sandwiched between Columbus and Dothan. We are a tourist community. We're on the lake. Uh, tourism, I don't know what percent of our budget revenue comes from tourism, but I imagine it's a, it's a large percentage. And I think that's, a, that's the direction we need to focus in. And uh, I, I think this, uh, without it, it's holding, holding our community back. And so I would very much be in favor of this passage. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm Elizabeth Davis, 435 West Broad Street. And I, I too, um, I'm an outsider, so unlike folks that have lived here and been in Ufala for years, I've been here about a year and a half and superintendent of the school system and um, see it as a, an important step in uh, moving forward and, uh, and basically supporting the businesses. Um, the tourism, the taxes, um, it's important. Um, we're working as hard as we can on our side to make the school system something that helps recruit. And that's one of the things even um, to recruit teachers and families. Um, we struggle, just like uh, Mr. Packard said, to recruit folks sometimes because it's something as simple as rental property. And so we're going above and beyond to help with that and to be progressive and, and um, provide uh, everyone with that opportunity. Um, that's, that's an important thing because the more that people stay here and shop and eat, eat, you know, it's not all about the drinking. It's about the eating, too, on Sundays. After church, the only restaurant that I can seem to find to sit down in to eat right now is El Jalisco, El Jalisco, because they, you know, evidently closed the, oh, well, and the Cajun restaurant. But uh, those things, if more are open on Sundays because they can sell alcohol, people are going to go and eat, like my family. We're going to go and eat lunch and supper so I don't have to cook. So it's just an important thing to move the bigger picture of the city of you follow forward so I, and I just um, I'm in support of that because when you look at bigger picture it's important as a city thank you ma'am okay do we have anyone else now is the time to speak anyone Okay. Uh, Ms. Pino. Okay. Did you have? Um, I was just going to stand up, and if y'all had any questions, yes. um, give y'all the opportunity um, to ask any questions. I was just going to go over the ordinance. It's self-explanatory. Um, however, <clears throat> still, you know, uh, selling to minors. Uh, this doesn't have any impact on that. Um, we, you know, that would still be illegal. Um, and basically, that uh, would be restaurants and hotels under paragraph A. Um, and we're currently, we don't have a hotel that serves. But if um, there's not a licensed um, hotel that has uh, that capacity, but they would be able to. 
Um, Lake Coin is not affected because it's a, a state facility, and so they're under separate um, rules and regulations. We don't issue them a license for um, what they do there. Okay, and then um, B is the sale of beer and table wine at retail. Um, they're properly licensed by the ABC board and the city of Eufaula. Um, all sales could not uh, begin until 12 noon, and they would have to end at 9.30 p.m. Um, <clears throat> the council, based on the local act that was passed by the legislature, y'all got the power, um, anything after 12. So, you know, there's... Um, the state law requires businesses to shut down at 2 a.m. on Sunday morning. Um, so if you're licensed, you can sell Saturday all the way into 2 a.m. So there's a window, but because of the local act, we can't go earlier than 12 noon. And so that's what um, so that's what that is. And but 9:30 is what we put in there. And this does not impact um, if there is a private club or that's got a private license that can already sell on Sunday, um, then this doesn't impact that. But because uh, there are several um, businesses that have private club licenses like the VFW, the Country Club, um, and, you know, several others. And so then, but like package stores, they would not be able to open. This does not apply to package stores, liquor stores. <laughs> or um, other businesses that have a club license that does not enable them to open up on, on a Sunday. So um, we have, uh, as far as currently, if y'all want to hear the names of the businesses that currently have a liquor license, I can give y'all that information. I brought that with me. <clears throat> it's the River City Grill, um, Graffiti's, Cajun Corner, Brickstone Brew, Burgers and Brews, El Jalisco, the Bird's Nest, Old Mexico, and um, Sam's Kitchen and Grill. So, and then those are the restaurants. Uh, I did not bring the convenience stores and the grocery store names um, for those. But anyway, so that is, um, so that's what we've got. And I know, uh, I believe Chief Watkins, um, I believe he also had some information that he wanted to share with y'all as well. Um, the issue of driving was, while intoxicated, was brought up momentarily. Um, there's limited research on the impact directly related to Sunday sales and crime and or driving under the influence. Um, the best study was done over a 15 year period and considered 13 states. Um, out of the 13 states, New Mexico was the only one that showed an increase in fatalities related to driving under the influence after they uh, relaxed the Sunday sale laws in New Mexico. Um, there really wasn't an answer for that other than the long distances that people that live in New Mexico had to drive between destination, between cities. And there was some discussion that some of the native people that live there were more predisposed to alcoholic diseases and, and things like that. Um, of the other studies, there is a consensus that um, crimes, especially property crimes, uh, would increase on Sunday. Um, but that's, you know, you're taking a Sunday that, that you don't have alcohol, a Sunday that you do have alcohol. Um, they're saying that the, the crimes on the, after you pass the ordinance does increase on Sundays when you just look at Sundays. Um, but over the course of the year, the entire crime trend for the different cities and states remains unchanged. Um, you know, that would be akin to a, a motel in Panama City having free rooms on Wednesdays. Our traffic flow would be greater on Wednesdays. The number of accidents would increase on Wednesdays. But throughout the course of the year, that would not have a dramatic impact on the overall traffic crashes or, or anything else in the city. So. Um, you know, based on the research, the crimes do increase on that one day, um, but overall it, it remains neutral. Thank you, Chief, for the survey. <clears throat> okay. Anyone on the council have a question? What's that? Anyone? Okay. 
Okay. Excuse me, ma'am. I didn't oh, see you. I, I, I apologize. Didn't know if we could, you know, I have shared. And can I ask a question, or is it is that over? No, ma'am. Okay. When you say questions, I didn't. Okay. No, I was talking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. With that in mind, what's the what's the wishes of the council? I feel that we need to move you all ahead progressively and I vote that we accept this ordinance and put it in place. Second. Okay, it's been properly moved and it's been properly signed. Are there any questions? At this time we have a roll call, please. Mr. Robertson? Yes. Mrs. Grice? Yes. Mr. Cobbs? Yes. Stay. Ms. Flora? Yes. Mr. Knight? Yes. Okay. With that and say it, um, ordinance 2017-7 um, has been paid. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on. Move on with the resolution. <coughs> resolution 40-2017, we have a weed abatement on South TV McCoo uh, Boulevard or uh, anybody here, the Williams or anybody that's uh, need to talk on that particular lot. Okay, with that in mind, what's the wishes of the council on Resolution 40-2017? Make a motion to adopt Resolution 40-2017. Alright, it's been properly moved. So and the second. Are there any questions? All in favor, let it be known by the word I. Those opposed, nay. Motion carried. For Southern cooking at its best, it's Michelle's of Georgetown. Located on Highway 82 East, just across the bridge in beautiful downtown Georgetown. Michelle's has a daily buffet from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And wait, it's the weekend. On Saturday and Sunday, they have a delicious breakfast buffet from 7 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. And at 5.30 p.m. on Friday and Saturday, it's one of the largest and freshest seafood buffets that you can find. So for Southern cooking at its best or the freshest seafood buffet around, it's Michelle's of Georgetown, 777 Highway 82 East in Georgetown, Georgia. All times are Eastern. So resolution 40-2017 passes. All right, next resolution is 41-2017. Uh, weed and abatement on South Orange Street. That's the Dolabes family. Anyone here to represent that family? Okay, what's the wishes of the council on resolution 41? That's 2017. Make a motion for 1-2017 be approved. All right. All right. It's been properly moved and second. Are there any questions? All in favor, let it be known by the word aye. Those opposed is nay. <coughs> Ayes have it. Motion carried. All right. Next week in debate, what we have is 42. Uh, Resolution 42 2017. It's owned by the Wilsons. That's on South TV McCoo Boulevard. First of all, is anybody here to speak up for, for that particular line? Okay, not wish the wishes of the council. Make a motion that we accept the resolution. All right. Second. It's been moved. Do we have a second? Second. All right, it's been moved and proper seven. I have a question. All right, all of those in favor, let it be known by the word aye. aye. Those opposed is nay. Ayes have it. Motion carried. All right, next one we have another weed and abatement. Uh, 43 2017. It's owned by the Berry family on South TV, TV McCoo Boulevard. What's the wishes of the council on that particular resolution? Make a motion for 2017 to approve. All right, it's been properly approved. Do I have a second? Second. All right, it's been properly moved and second. Are there any questions? All in favor, let it be known by the word aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Motion carried. Motion passes. All right, we have a one more invasion, uh, 44 2017. Uh, that's on. 2001 Nancy Ross Drive. Uh, anybody from that family ever speak on that particular lot? Okay. Uh, 
okay? If not, what's the wishes of the council on it? Make a motion for the 2017 be approved. All right. Second. All right, it's been properly moved and second. Are there any questions? All in favor, let it be known by the word aye. All opposed is nay. Ayes have it. Motion carried. All right. That take care of all of the resolution. Now we we'll come down to the board appointments. Uh, I don't think we have anybody but the, the library, right? All right, we have a resume here. And uh, for the uh, Conagre Library Board, we have one, two, we have four. Uh, do it separately or since they all uh, they all want to be right there. Yeah. Let's just so do it as a group. Okay, they all want wish to be real. Mm -hmm. So you want to do it by one? Okay. Just a group. A group. You want to do it by a group? Okay. It's on it's a three year term. Uh what's your what's your wishes on Jeanette Baxley, uh Meryl Dillons, Mamie Hamilton, and Kate Whaley. That's on the board for the library. It's a three-year term. What's your wishes? I make the motion that we adopt these four for the three-year term. Second. Okay. It's been properly moved and second. <coughs> uh, all, are there any questions? All in favor, let it be known by the word aye. Aye. Right. Those, hey, thank you. Um, think you need to take me Okay. All right, down to the regular. Uh, regular. Again. Okay, <clears throat> our regular com our regular agenda. Let's go with the finance first. Uh, we have Miss Flurry. No report. No report. All right. Gonna have no report for finance. Next, we have education, library, zoning, and chamber. Mrs. Grice. Um, I don't have anything, but Ms. Harrison's here if she wants to. I'm still standing up to tell y'all thank you very much for your progressive move tonight. We appreciate it. As y'all know, the chamber has been here for work. So, any alcohol sales, we think it will make a big impact on our community in a positive way. Um, as Mayor Tibbs mentioned earlier, we have the Smithsonian exhibit at our chamber, and our chamber's first Friday, this Friday, uh, 7.30 to 8.30, is um, touring the exhibit. We'd we'll love for y'all to all come by. And um, kind of, I sent y'all a report. You saw most of the things we're doing. I did want to mention um, we were reaching out to work with uh, Representative Martha Roby um, and bringing her here in August to meet with our industry leaders. So I'll be back in touch with thank you guys on that. Get y'all a time and date, and hopefully y'all can come by and meet with her. Okay. Yeah. Anybody? We're just busy getting ready for the school year. Okay. All right. Uh, parks, recreation, and airport. Councilman Cox. One, one final time, I want to thank the council very much for your support for the playground of dreams. It is rocking and rolling out there. It's constant. Uh, appreciate the mayor and, and town for coming up with some money to pave that street um, and the, and the uh, parking lot next to it. I uh, really, really appreciate it. And, and, if, and if you want to know how everybody feels, it won't take you long to go out there just sit a little bit and, and listen. All you got to do is listen to all the kids and laughing and playing and having fun. So thank y'all. You're doing a good job, Keith. Thank you. Chief, I had a guy at the, uh, just a minute, man. I had a little boy, I think, I guess he was about four, five. Uh, he was in church. And he, he came out to the park. And uh, somebody told him to say this. I don't know who, but he, 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 he hollered out, Houseman Knight, I had a good time at the park. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could have went on the table, but I said thank you. That makes it all work right here. Okay, ma'am. Just a very quick, I wasn't expecting this space on Carl Park, but just we'll send um, invitations to you all, but for our uh, Institute Day, August 7th, 
We are thrilled that we will have Barbara Dooley, who's Vince Dooley's wife. She will be our guest speaker. Um, if you haven't heard her speak before, she is hilarious and entertaining and motivating. Um, but she um, she will be our guest speaker that day on August 7th. It will be at the community center. So we're thrilled and we'll send you all invitations. We just want you to know that. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Next, street, sanitation, and cemetery. Councilman Robinson. Um, I think the mayor hit on all the sidewalks, the Schwab Drive, so him and his group are doing a good job, so that's it. Okay, thank you. Police, fire, and personnel. Uh, I have already talked to the chief, and I'm going to get a chance to chat with the mayor. We have been getting so many complaints and action going on at these compartments, these departments out in the Chattahoochee Court and those places. But uh, we need to get together, meet with the chief and the people that's over these complaints because chief and his department is running over to these places. I think I told you this last council meeting. Three and four times. And, and when they see or uh, hear the police coming, they all disperse. So now that's taking up their time. I know I know it's their job. But we need to get with these people that's over uh, these uh, uh, homes and, and, and just let them know we need help. You know, if there was a time, and I can remember this, I never lived in a project, but I can remember when if, if something happened like that, and the report got back to the office, then they made it hard for the parent. And maybe we should go back to that. Also, I mean, it's, it's kind of it's kind of rough, and you have a lot of fights, and I know most of you don't be around where there's a lot of fighting going on, and cursing, and knifing, and all that stuff, but uh, it's, it's rough. And Chief, I just want to tell you, if you look in your package, you see a report from the fire chief. He's doing a tremendous job. We thank you, sir. And uh, we ask you to keep the good work up. I see him uh, exercising, I guess, every afternoon running in the police department. But uh, you're too chief. You all are doing a very, very, very good job. Very good. And I commend you. Keep up the good work. Now, I say this for last. The best. I never heard. I never heard the next lady who I'm about to call up. I never heard her say hi, bye, or nothing. I just want to hear from her myself. I don't want to introduce her. I want the council, and I want the city of you forward, especially the citizens to listen to our newest lady on staff, Miss Elizabeth Coughlin. Coughlin? Yes, sir. Okay, Coughlin. And if you don't mind, please come to the podium and just tell us a little something about you. Okay. Just a little. Just a little something. Well, you'll judge my northern accent then. If you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> First time you heard me talk. <laughs> But my name is Elizabeth Conklin. I've lived here in Ufala for about two and a half years. I'm an 07 graduate in Human Resources from Auburn. And my husband works at American Buildings. So I've got two small kids and I'm excited to make you follow my home and come here and start my career with the city. It's been great. I've been here about three weeks now, starting okay. my third week. Okay, we hope you enjoy your stay. Thank and, you. And uh, we hope you are. Uh, Get along with everybody, and everybody get along with you. I will. Can, Thank can, you. Can you say? Can you say y'all? No, I don't. I say you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta learn to say y'all. She's our new HR. 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 Yeah. Okay. Our new uh, human resource risk management, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. With that said, anything else need to be said before the uh, before the council? You might see every council meeting I do this. I make a motion with a journal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pass that to somebody.
good day to everybody, and we hope you all come back to the next council. Welcome to Old Mexico. Old Mexico features great food, an adult beverage bar, and nightly specials in our family restaurant. Happy hour is from 4.30 until 7 p.m., six days a week. Our phone number is 334-687-7770. Old Mexico, located at 1248 South Eufaula Avenue. Hours are 11 to 2 and 4.30 until 9, Monday through Wednesday. Open till 10 on Thursday through Saturday and 11 until 9 p.m. on Sunday. Old Mexico features the best authentic Mexican food with banquet and large party room that can be reserved. Old Mexico, unique to Eufaula, 1248 South Eufaula Avenue. Old Mexico, celebrating 24 years of business by owner Santiago and Salome Solerio.